Time traveling on Saturday mornings, this is your look at the new NECA Toys Back to the Future of the Animated Series, Marty McFly. Marty McFly and Doc Brown experience the adventure of a lifetime in an unlikely time machine as they travel to the past, the present, and the future, setting off a time-shattering chain reaction that disrupts the time-space continuum. Before we go jumping into the DeLorean, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Marty McFly from the animated series stands. While I'm getting those calculations in order, I'd like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of animated Marty McFly that we're having a look at in this review. If you're in the market of picking this one up for yourself, you're looking at Marty McFly from the cartoon series standing five inches in height. Exactly. It's right there. You can see. Switching that to centimeters. Didn't mean to startle you, by the way. You're looking at the figure standing 12.8, almost 13 centimeters in height. Probably the most fitting comparison we can make. We'll move over animated Marty McFly and we'll bring in movie Marty McFly, also produced by NECA Toys. Obviously a big jump when it comes to the design of the character. Mar movie Marty McFly is more rooted in reality, where animated Marty McFly is obviously pulled from the TV screen when the cartoon series of Back to the Future First was running. A series I used to actually watch back in the day, every Saturday morning. But you can definitely see there's a big jump in size. And one good thing about the animated Marty McFly, something I talked about when we had a look at the die-cast DeLorean, is he fits a little bit better in scale to that car versus the movie Marty McFly. To show you what I mean, I've brought in the DeLorean that we looked at in the previous review. As you can see, the DeLorean, first of all, color-wise, as I said in the review of it, I think fits better for the animated style of figures because they're more singular color. The lighter gray that they went with for the surface of the DeLorean, I think, lends better to the idea of going with the cartoon style of figures. The figures are still too big, unfortunately. But just to give you an idea, we'll open up the gull wing door on this side of the DeLorean. We'll just put it down for a second. We'll take animated Marty McFly. He's a little limited when it comes to articulation. We'll talk about that in a second or well, later into the review. But we'll sort of get him as flat as we can possibly get him, you know, in the seating position. And just to show you, he doesn't quite fit inside, but he fits a lot better than the movie Marty McFly. While I can't get him in completely, he needs to be just a little bit smaller. I think certainly when it comes to displaying this, I'm going to put Marty McFly probably next to DeLorean. And you can sort of imagine that he would be able to fit inside, even though technically he doesn't. And again, until we get ourselves a movie DeLorean that's going to fit properly these figures, this is probably going to be the figures that I'm going to pair with the die-cast DeLorean that we looked at in the earlier review. Checking out the accessories that come included with animated Marty McFly, why don't we first start with the hoverboard? The hoverboard is definitely a different take on the hoverboard that Marty McFly has in the movie. This one feels more like almost something I would see the neutrinos flying around from Dimension X on, or perhaps maybe Elroy Jetson from the Jetsons. It definitely has a much more cartoon look to it, and it looks like something literally that would propel an exhaust on the back. I do like the details that they added by those additional three yellow dots. I do additionally like the panel lining, where you can see on the top there, it's been done in pink. Got a few little scratches, unfortunately, on that. And that's only probably from putting a figure on it. I'm hoping that's not going to be a continued trend. And then on the bottom, you can see there's a nice pastel blue with this darker blue here. Yes, there's a hole right there. We'll talk about that in a second. But I do like the panel lining. Very nice touch on their part. Again, works itself to make it look more animated than realistic. Because there is that hole on the bottom, you can use the display stand that comes included with it. Pretty sure it's the same stand that came included with the Back to the Future Part 2 Marty McFly for attaching the same thing, the hoverboard. Now, when you are attaching it to the bottom, just wiggle this in place. If you push too far up, sometimes I've noticed what it does is it starts separating this bottom half of the hoverboard from the top half of the hoverboard. So far, I've only been able just to push this back in place and it seems to 
plug back. It almost makes a little bit of a snapping sound when I push that back together. But don't push it too close together. Like I said, these two halves will start separating. But it does give you at least the option to pivot and angle the hoverboard if you want. And of course, because it does have the peg hole on the top, quite easily you can take Marty McFly, use either one of his feet. I guess it probably makes more sense to use this foot if he's looking this way and just attach the figure just to the stand. Basically the exact same way that the movie Marty McFly worked, except if you remember the Marty McFly, same problem also as well. The Marty McFly from the movie, you remember I actually had a little peg area that you actually had to take off and replace with the one that had the peg hole. This one, they've just simply put the peg on the top of the hoverboard. But it does have some of the same issues with the with this standing. It does help to, if you tilt this sideways, sort of help to stabilize Marty McFly when he's on top of his hoverboard. He's also a little bit smaller too, so he's less likely to fall over. Unlike the movie Marty McFly, which was a little bit taller of a figure, more inclined, yes, to tilt over. While he's still hovering there, let's have a look at the other accessories he comes included with. He comes included with a guitar. Similar color scheme, actually, of the guitar as the hoverboard. Pink here on the handle. Pink also at the back here where the strings are with some additional red on the buttons or the little adjustment knobs. And then the rest of the guitar is mostly a blue. Well, that's not 100% true. On the back of the guitar, it's all done in this really nice violet purple. The strap also has been attached with a peg on the end there and this is just all soft plastic so you can either take it take marty mcfly off his hoverboard you can either fit it around his head like so probably not like that completely let's do this right feed this up onto his shoulder you can bring the arm around this way and just stretch it across his head there we go that gives you the proper look or what you can also do as well the other accessory he comes included with is a hand you can give a hand, certainly when it comes to holding his guitar or his hoverboard. All you're just going to do is wiggle this off. It's a very narrow peg. You'll see in a second what I mean. Just wiggle that off like so. Try not to drop the guitar in the process. Replace the hand with now the gripping hand. And this is probably going to be the hand that I'm going to be using moving forward. Because it also allows him to hold the guitar, which I'll pick up in a second. He can also take the hoverboard off the stand and he can somewhat hold it. I say somewhat hold it. He more or less just grips it onto the side. And I guess if anything, you could probably have him just looking like he's holding the top of the board, just kind of like that, having it balancing on top. But the intended purpose is really for him to be holding the guitar. Let me just show you what I mean by that. Yes, retrieving the guitar, you can see he actually holds the handle in his hand quite easily. You can move it around and it's not going to be going anywhere. It looks a little ridiculous. He's probably not going to be playing guitar like that. So again, you can go back to feeding this back up. In this case, I'll feed this up from this side, loop this around, and then you can take his other arm, now with the new hand, and just twist this around like that. And you can kind of have him holding the guitar this way. Unfortunately, with the limitations that he does have to the arms, there's very little articulation to speak of. Short on a straight on swivel. You can't really bring the arms in any further than that. So I guess what you could do is you can bring Marty's arm up as if he's ready to strung the guitar. Just bring the strap around. Make sure it's still firmly secure around his shoulder. Let me just get everything fixed and sorted out here. And then we can just bring the guitar like that. And you, yeah, again, you can kind of make it almost look like, let's just rest the guitar on it. You can almost make it look like he's ready to strung his guitar. You probably could pull it off a little more successful than what I just did. So there's that look as well. I mean, again, there's limitations to the fact that the articulation on these figures are only really kept to just straight out swivels that we will talk about in a second. Let's bring those arms back down. Having first a look at the head sculpt, though, really I was surprised when we were finding out that NECA Toys was going to be doing a Back to the Future franchise. I really thought, if anything, they were only going to be kept it rooted in the movie verse. And then lo and behold, of course, now we've got ourselves the cartoon series as well. Very short-lived cartoon. I think it was available on some of the released Blu-ray sets. You could find all the cartoon episodes on there. Prior to that, I think they may have released a few of the handful episodes onto regular DVD format. If you are checking that out, you probably even find it on YouTube as well. 
But I'm glad to see that they did give us animated treat treatment figures. We do have now Marty McFly, a Doc Brown, and a Biff. I hope also we're going to be getting ourselves a Jules and Vern. I do like the head sculpt, though, for this Marty McFly. You can see a little smirk on the corner of his face. All done nicely with panel lines. The panel lines also come into play when it outlines the areas of his eyes. Certainly does allow those eyes just to pop. I also additionally like the sculpting of his hair. Nice bright colors also for his jacket. The white shirt, the more... It almost kind of comes across more like a cherry taffy red. It's not quite solid red. In fact, I feel, if anything, the studio lights are probably making it a little bit brighter than what it actually is. But he does have a nice looking jacket that can be separated from the rest of his body. Unfortunately, though, one of the things that you do see separating the jacket... Now, keep it in mind, you're probably not even going to do that because you can't take the jacket off anyways. But unfortunately, yeah, there's just a little bit of bread that's made its way onto his shirt. I'm not even going to see it because, yeah, the jacket's hanging down the whole time. Do you like the bright sleeves, the addition of the very large wristwatch on his hand, and some nice additional panel lining done both on the sleeves, the cuffs of the sleeves, and the bottom section of his jacket as well. Moving a little bit further down, we have his larger sneakers, and those have the nice coloring of both white and red, with the undersole being done in white, sporting again a pair of peg holes on the undersides of the figure's feet. Looking at the figure's articulation, now again, this is where it kind of becomes limited. If you are collecting, say, like the Toonie Terrors, which I'm a big fan of myself, you'll be rather familiar with the same sort of style of articulation. The head rotates back and forth. It does technically have a ball joint, so it does get something at least that the arms don't. But you can move the head up, you can move the head down. Not a lot, mind you. Tilt it back and forth, and yeah, you can rotate the head all the way around. For the arms, this is where the limitations sort of come into play. The arms only allow you to swivel all the way around. And with some swiveling, unfortunately, you do sacrifice a little bit. You notice this big cut that happens inside to his sleeve, right, right there. See? Right there. But again, like keeping in mind, again, these figures are more stylized in design. It doesn't bother me too much that they're limited on articulation. The hands rotate all the way around. He does have a waist swivel. A little tighter on this figure, but he does have a waist swivel. Likes to go forward and back. They don't split out or anything like that. And he does also have foot articulation as well. Sort of the bare basics, but... Again, for the fact, keeping in mind as well, that we have finally animated Back to the Future figures. Uh, I'm just thrilled for the fact that we finally get those. Yes, it's nice to get the movie-verse. That would be the first thing I would hope that they would tackle. But the idea of throwing in their animated style Back to the Future figures is pretty cool as well. And I do like the way that Marty McFly has turned out. Animated shows based on movies don't tend to do so well. In fact, you look at the track record of Saturday morning cartoons, and there's probably a list you could comprise of various animated shows that got canceled that were based on movies. Shows like Karate Kid, not so good. Shows like Teen Wolf, another Michael J. Fox cartoon outing, don't do so well. And surprisingly, Back to the Future lasted 26 episodes. Not sure if all 26 made it to TV, but if you're certainly in the market of picking them up now, you could pick them up as, I believe, bonuses for the Blu-ray and 4K releases of Back to the Future, or you can even just buy them as standalones. You can buy a complete series, I think, on four discs over on Amazon right now. So if you are in the market of getting the Back to the Future animated series, and maybe I've never got a chance to, to view it, it's available. It's out there. You can check it out. Very happy to see that NECA Toys didn't just give us movie versions of Marty McFly. They gave us an animated version of Marty McFly, too. And that's that's pretty cool. Back to the Future is one of those properties that work extremely well as an animated series because you can continue the run of having them jumping into a time machine, traveling to the different times, both past and future. Works extremely well for an animated series. And I can definitely understand why Back to the Future made it to a cartoon. Didn't survive the longevity of a real Ghostbusters run, mind you, but still 26 episodes is not too shabby at all. Also not too shabby here is the animated treatment of Marty McFly presented here from NECA Toys. Do get some nice accessories. I know admittingly I do have probably the guitar facing the wrong way, but it was the only way I could really make use of that gripping hand. It looks like he's almost ready to strung a few tunes on his guitar. Wrong way, I'm sure, of course. But it's nice to also see that he comes included with his hoverboard, a way to display the hoverboard, and again, a swappable hand. Now, we are getting ourselves a Doc Brown. We are also getting ourselves a Biff. But I'm hoping as well that we're going to be seeing ourselves Jules and Vern. They were sort of the antagonist for the animated series. 
a lot of times it was them that were jumping into the time machine and doing all their time traveling adventures. I hope at the very least we are going to be seeing ourselves at Jules and Vern in the not so immediate future. A big thank you again to the folks over at NECA Toys for providing the sample of animated Marty McFly. Let me know down below in the comments section if you've ever seen the Back to the Future animated series. And can you think of any other doomed animated series that were based on movies? There's probably a whole ton of them. I'm surprised that we never got a Gremlins animated series. That just sort of seems like a no-brainer to me. And yet we never did get an animated Gremlins. Maybe one of these days we will. Either way, though, if you are new to the channel and liking the content you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below. No, you don't have to jump into a time-traveling train either. You can move on over to that friendly bell notification bell and ring that so that when future videos are coming onto this channel, let's just say, oh, Monday to Friday, let's just say, oh, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, let's just say, is that 10 videos a week? Yeah, you, you know simple math. You also read the script. Good job. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys, so keep your papers peeled. Lots of neck reviews lined up and coming your way. So, as always, stay tuned to this channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.